Welcome to another episode of 50 Insane Details, a series where I find easter eggs, details and state the obvious about Star Wars games. Today we are looking at the new gameplay trailer for Star Wars Outlaws. Hopefully there's going to be some stuff in here that you missed that you haven't seen, but if you notice any details yourself, please let me know in the comments. Let's do it. Hey everyone, it's Andrew. <laughs> While playing Star Wars Outlaws as K-Vess, the main character, you have a companion called Nyx, and Nyx is a new species called Markal. Apparently this is an exotic species from an undisclosed, unknown location, unknown planet, we don't know yet. But this is how it's spelt. No, you after Q. They broke the dictionary. No. It appears that there is no minimap in Star Wars Outlaws. Instead, you'll have this compass at the top of the screen. More on how that works very soon. In the opening section of this gameplay trailer, the player is in a restricted area, which is a similar gameplay mechanic to what we've seen in Watch Dogs and Assassin's Creed, both of which were also Ubisoft games. It looks like the square button on PlayStation and X button on Xbox is a melee button because you use this to perform takedowns, but will also likely be able to use it for a melee attack. LB or L1 is how you change your blaster mode, going from regular blasts to ion pulse cannon blasts to take down this shield and also stun blasts and you'll also find more upgrades throughout the world as you play through. The right bumper or R1 button is what you use to control Nyx. Nyx can attack characters, he can activate traps, he can help you solve puzzles, he can do a bunch of things. In this Pike Syndicate base we can see an A-Wing being dismantled in the middle. There's also a yellow TIE fighter in the background which I believe is a mining guild TIE fighter which I think we saw in Star Wars Rebels. I'm pretty sure the Pike Syndicate have taken ships from both the Rebellion and Empire and are repurposing their parts. After punching this pike in the face, <laughs> K-Vess actually shakes her hand off like it hurt. I like this little detail. It shows that she's actually human and it's a neat little animation. You can see this ship in the background here take off. Why is this important? You'll find out soon. This droid on the left here is a protocol droid which looks like it's switched off, having a little nap, or is completely shut down. Oh my. When you get detected by an enemy in a restricted zone, a prompt appears on the screen. In this case, press Y. By pressing Y, the camera will actually turn towards the guard and K-Vess will try and talk her way out of the situation. This reminds me a lot of a gameplay feature in Red Dead 2 where you can fake a surrender and then shoot your way out of trouble. You can actually shoot from the hip without aiming down sights for a quick surprise attack, which is also similar to Red Dead 2. When he's falling over after being shot, the Rodian is actually shooting. You can see his blaster going off. And it also seems like the enemies react specifically to where you shoot them. This Rodian gets shot in the leg, he reacts accordingly. If you keep your eye on the compass, you'll notice that enemies actually appear as red dots. So you can see where they all are. Next to the crosshair in the middle of the screen, you can see a bar filling up. This is a cooldown system for your blaster, similar to how blasters work in Battlefront 2. And so your blaster works on an overheat system instead of having ammunition. Because the player's in a restricted area here, once you start making some noise, you'll get a notification saying enemies alerted. There's another icon on the compass, apart from north, south, east, and west. This appears to be a small city and is likely where the hub world is or the main location on whatever planet you're on. A red exclamation mark also appears on the screen to indicate where enemies coming from to help you shoot your way out of trouble or just run just leg it we see a couple times in the trailer k -Vess moving her way around the environment and vaulting over cover. It seems like some level of parkour will be a gameplay feature in this game. I'm not sure you're going to be climbing buildings Assassin's Creed style, but it looks like your movement's pretty decent. You can see your HP at the bottom of the screen, which is divided into a few different sections. And speaking of movement, it seems like the cover system in the game is dynamic, meaning you don't have to press a button to lean against a wall or anything like that. If you move towards it, k -Vess will likely just go into cover. You can actually tell Nyx to go and fetch objects for you. You can see here there's a healing item, so your health likely won't recover just on its own, you need to actually heal. And there's also a weapon here on the left, which means you can use weapons that the enemies drop. You can shoot explosive barrels, and they explode. It's wonderful. It's glorious. The explosions look pretty good too, graphically I'm speaking. Boom. When Nyx brings you an item, you need to press Y or triangle on PlayStation to pick it up. And here you can see the player grabbing an A300 blaster rifle. Now weapons you pick up don't work on a cooldown system, you do have ammunition. You can see this bar here goes down. And as you shoot. The game has a grappling hook mechanic. Not sure how much you'll be able to use this, I don't think it's going to be Cal Kestis style in Jedi Survivor, but this is a level of parkour we're getting here. You also mount your speeder bike by pressing Y. It seems like Y on triangle is the main prompt button, which is the same as GTA. You get in a car by pressing triangle. You get on your horse in Red Dead by pressing triangle. You get on your speeder bike by pressing triangle or Y, whatever. On the bottom right of the screen when you're on the speeder bike, you can see two different bars. The top bar is your boost or nitro, which allows you to go faster. And the bottom bar appears to be your HP. It also seems like there's fall damage for vehicles. When you go off a jump, you can take some damage. So be careful with that thing. I don't know if you can probably destroy your speeder bike. That's, that's a bit of a problem. I hope you can upgrade it too. Just go full GTA LS customs, drive it in, drive out, sick paint job, all the works. 
In the bottom left, we have your special ability, which appears to be in this case a dead eye ability, similar to Red Dead 2. This blaster icon also has two bars, one shorter yellow bar and another longer one. And when full, five icons appear on the left, which means you can probably shoot five separate dead eye targets. I'm assuming this is an upgradable ability. The VX Commando droid wearing a trench coat is called ND5. Best drip in all of Star Wars. Most unnecessary coat. Why does he wear this? Just to blend in, to fit in with everyone else? He knows he looks cool. Gangster, maybe he's just cold. Remember how I mentioned that ship leaving the base earlier? Well, you can actually see it here flying by. And it actually goes and lands in the local town. I'm assuming you can go there and meet whoever's inside. Maybe commandeer the ship yourself. I of us! Maybe shoot everyone inside. Maybe make a deal with them. Maybe it's a side mission. Maybe it's a random event. Who knows? Could be anything. You can see Jaunter's Hope up here in the distance, which is a town on Tashara, the moon that we are currently on. NPCs and civilians in the game are also are able to ride their own cars and bikes around. You see one here that K narrowly avoids, nearly dies, nearly has a head on collision. Meow. And I hope you can actually steal their bikes and cars also. That'd be sweet. So you can see here your reputation with the Pike Syndicate actually goes down. And this will affect your experience of the game. This isn't a choose your own adventure game, but you will be making certain choices throughout the game which affect gameplay and affect which missions are available to you. So for example, because we had a run in with the Pike Syndicate and we got discovered on the mission that we were on, we likely won't be able to take jobs with the Pike Syndicate until we build the reputation up with them. And there's multiple factions in the games, like the Huts, like another one. I'm hoping the Empire is also a faction you can build reputation with. And all of these things affect your experience with the game. Amazing. Here we can see more NPC civilians. There's one driving, there's one just chilling on the side of the road. It's so cool to see so many NPCs. We haven't seen a living, breathing Star Wars world, open world like this, probably since Star Wars Galaxies. And that's going way back to the early 2000s. I guess like Star Wars you could say is close also. That's Lego. Lego is always different. And, I, and I'm assuming you can likely interact and shoot or do what you want with a lot of the NPCs, pretty much all of them. It's open world. Hopefully it's going to have a lot of sandbox elements. Just go nuts, go on a rampage, become the galaxy's most wanted for killing NPCs on the side of the road. Meow. You guys notice the wind in the game? As the wind moves through town, you can see little rocks blowing in the wind, dust particles, flowers blowing in the breeze, Kay's hair is flapping along, and also the little cloths on buildings. It's small details like this that make the world feel alive and a lot less stale. It feels like it's living, breathing, like there's wind. After you get off your speedy, you can actually see where it is on your compass. So if you need to get back on, you just walk over to it. I'm also wondering if there's gonna be a mechanic feature like in GTA. If you know where near your speedy, you can call it up. Maybe Nix will go get it for you. Up here on the left, just before Kay walks into the canteen, you can see a creature sleeping. I'm not sure what the species of this creature is, but I'm assuming you can also wake it up. Hopefully it's friendly. It looks friendly. It's just chilling in town. So surely it's not going to attack and kill anyone that wakes it up. There's also a red astromech droid here on the right. As KVS walks into the canteen, you can see some Orabesh up on the screen here. This says foods and lists the available foods on the bar menu in the cantina. I don't think you can actually order any of them though. And I tried translating some of the others and I'm pretty sure they're all gibberish and don't make sense. It's loud, loud, loud. It's like that. There's currency in the game, credits. You can see here, K gets 2,500 of them. And you can likely use these credits to upgrade certain things, weapons, buy things, attachments. I'm not sure how much customization is gonna be available in the game. And if you're actually gonna be able to customize KVS's appearance. No one knows yet. We'll see as time progresses. But as a consequence of you keeping more of your Republic credits and not giving them to this Imperial officer as a bribe, the Empire is coming after you. You get a wanted level and this goes up and down if you attack Imperials. You see in space, we have a wanted level, KVS shoots this TIE fighter and then the wanted level goes up like GTA in space. GTA space, Star Wars, Galaxies, Wars. That's the name of my game. As KVS walks onto her ship, which is called the Trailblazer and is an E. ML850 light freighter from the Republic era, you'll notice that there's a workbench option, which you can probably use to upgrade your blaster and other attachments. And that's 50 details, but what's one detail you noticed in the game that I might have missed? Let me know in the comments. Also, for more Star Wars and Star Wars gaming, stick around, subscribe, and also come follow me on Instagram, Twitter, join my Discord and TikTok for lots more of everything. Been posting more on Twitter, come check it out. Some interesting details over there. And thanks for watching this. My name's Andrew. I'll catch you soon.